What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and today we are here for another new episode of the College Football Revamp Rebuilds here in NCAA 14, and today, the week we start off knowing what is well ahead of us at the end of the week, the 2021 NFL Draft, and today I want to do a rebuild with a school that has one of the most prominent figures in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, and that is BYU quarterback Zach Wilson. And I figure, why not? If you're ever going to do BYU, you might as well do it when they have like their most hyped up, talented quarterback, maybe ever. It seems like a lock right now that Zach Wilson will go second overall to the New York Jets. Things could change. But it's looking that way, so I figure let's get a little bit of Zach Wilson rebuild going on here with the B. Why you Cougars very good team kind of a similar rebuild to the last school we did in Cincinnati where BYU is a legitimate program much like Cincinnati not from the power fives but have kind of over the last couple of years established themselves as one of the better programs like if you're listing the top 25 teams in college football BYU might be making that top 25 so let's meet this roster as we gear up for a five-year rebuild trying to do something that's ever been done before that's when a national championship with BYU. So at quarterback, we have the Richard Senior, Zach Wilson, 98 overall, one of the most talented quarterbacks in all of college football, I will say. We also have 281 Redshirt sophomore, so it's not going to be all doom and gloom once Zach Wilson moves on after the first year with both these guys. Very high ceilings and should be able to take the torch that Zach Wilson passes off to them going into year two and beyond in this rebuild. But while we have Zach Wilson, very excited to see if we can run the gauntlet this season and put ourselves with an undefeated season right in contention for a national championship. At running back, we have Tyler Algier, sophomore, 87 overall, K uh, Katoa. Get ready for it. Bunch of these names. Never seen any of them in Canada, so if I butcher them, I'm apologizing. But uh, Algier and Katoa, both really good one-two punch at running back. At wide receiver, we have Dax Mill, 93 overall, very prolific with Zach Wilson in the season that just passed. I'm not even going to butcher that name. Pau. Pau, probably. 83. Gunnar Romney, 82. We got Matt Bushman at tight end, 80. Even though, you know, he's a tight end. Rex had a breakout season. A freshman dude had like 45 touchdowns uh, in relief duty of Bushman, who missed the 2020 season due to injury. But look at that, man. That is an incredibly high season. That's a future 99 overall tight end there in Isaac Rex. Offensive line, I think low-key BYU... Might have had the best offensive line in all college football last year. Brady Christensen, we got a 94, 85 for Barrington, 88. James Empey, one of the best centers in all of college football. Hogue at right guard and at right tackle. Chandon Herring, between Herring and Christensen, maybe the best athletics one from one side or the other on any team in college football. Herring had an insane pro day. Christensen, insane pro day. I think both those guys are going to be playing football on Sundays. Defensively, Gets a little bit weaker. We got a 73 and 86. Da, better of the two. Inside, Kiris Tonga is outstanding. Uh, 6'4", 321, one of the better nose tackles in this upcoming draft. Uh, we have this guy, Bracken L. Bakri, 86 overall. Solid rating. Linebacking core, we got Peely, 87. Uh, Kalfusi at 89. Peyton Wilgar, 87. So our linebacking core, to be completely honest with you, is on point. We got Max Tooley, 76, the weakest of the group, but he's a Richard sophomore. He's only going to get better in what looks to be the next final two seasons. He's not going to be going, hopefully, as an underclassman. At corner, Chris Wilcox is the best of the group, 88 overall. Uh, rest of the corner room, not great, but for the most part, it's young. We got a lot of freshmen, so hopefully, uh, while the offense is definitely going to carry the burden of responsibility for the success of this team early on, I think we have a lot of good young players on the defensive side of the ball that that tide may shift year three-ish of this real free safety. We have Zane Anderson, 86, and strong safety. Uh, Troy Warner, brother, plays for the 49ers. Very good. I don't know if he's, you know, he's as good as his brother, but still 88. I will take that every day of the week. We got old Royd uh, at, at uh, kicker here. He's a 93, and at punter, Ryan Rakow, 87 overall. So a very solid Special teams unit. But let's not kid ourselves. The star of the show, the bell of the ball, is QB1 under center, Zach Wilson. We have one year with Zach Wilson. Let's see if we can run the gauntlet and just where we can end up at the end of the season. Recruiting, definitely weird. Definitely way less recruit options than I've had before. Like, there was straight up, like, no QBs, no running backs that had any interest. I don't know if there's, like, something programmed 
because BYU obviously is a uh, religious school. Um, so I just felt like the player pool was not great, but also we're only a three-star program. So we have that working against us as something that we also have to try to achieve in this rebuild is raise the prestige of BYU. But we're, we, you know, we're, we're just outside the top five on a 75-plus tackle here in Ryan Davis. Uh, we got 74 Garrett Humphrey. I don't know if he's related to Creed because he's number one school is Oklahoma, but we're going to try our best to sway that. Um, but yeah, ultimately not going to be blown away with the type of recruits. I mean, we're looking here. This is the biggest one. Kevin Willis, four-star strong safety. We are within his top five of those schools ahead of us. We absolutely can compete with some of those schools, but I don't think you're going to see an absolute juggernaut of a recruiting school, at least early on here with BYU. So that being said, let's get into year one and see just what kind of damage Zach Wilson can do here in his final year of college football. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Undefeated, 12-0, number two ranked. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now, there's a chance we get bumped. There's always a chance to get bumped, especially being independence. Clemson's undefeated. Miami, okay. So we should feel kind of good with it. Cincinnati, the team we just rebuilt, they ran the, they ran the gauntlet there, so it wasn't like we were somehow juicing. With the Bearcats, and they're very good. But looking at this, um, I don't think there's any way that we're not playing for a national championship here in year one. All or nothing with Zach Wilson. You can't ask for a lot more than that. Looking at the season stats, he is sixth in passing yards. 3,300 passing yards, 35 touchdowns, only four interceptions. You know, one of the things you do need to know if you're unfamiliar with the NCAA 14 sim is that if you have a great quarterback, if you put a 99 overall quarterback on a team that's full of, you know, give me a, give me a solid average of 75 overall, the rest of the team, that team's still probably going to go positive. Like, a good quarterback is ultimately the defining factor here. Like, if I, if I had a bad quarterback, bad offense, but like S-tier defense, I don't think it'd play particularly well in, a, in an NCAA 14 sim. But you have that good quarterback, anything is possible as you can see by our undefeated season. Uh, Algier got uh, 1,100 yards, almost 17 touchdowns. Those are big-time numbers. We got 75 catches, 1,100 yards, 11 tutties for Dax Milne. Uh, Rex, six touchdowns, 650 yards. Romney had a solid season as well. Defensively, 76 tackles from Peely. We had 15 TFLs from Tofa, as well as four and a half sacks leading the team. Four interceptions from Troy Warner. His brother Freddie. Gonna be pretty happy with that performance leading the team in interception. So let's just sim one more week ahead. Confirm that we'll be playing in a national championship game. Let's see what we can do against either Clemson or Miami. And that's something I can get out for. I thought it'd be Zach Wilson, but Algier, number four in the Heisman race, trading Najee Harris from Alabama. And just like that, though, we are able to secure our ticket to the national championship game. Like we thought we could. I mean, it's NCAA 14. We all know strength of schedule. Like, if you can go undefeated, you got yourself a chance. If we played the schedule that was there for BYU, we ran the gauntlet. Let's see, like Clemson. All right, well, already know Clemson. They got Georgia victory. North Carolina State was ranked. Florida State there. Number five, Miami. Ultimately, let's not, like, again, anytime we've played Clemson, I feel like even going back to the last rebuild we did with Cincinnati, it wasn't like Clemson had, like, Five or six ranked games or something like that. They, they have kind of an easy schedule. Some filler. They'll get up. We we beat eight Texas by dropping fifty two points. We beat Utah, Virginia, Utah State, Georgia Tech, Houston, Boise. We beat Notre Dame. We honestly belong here more than Clemson does. I mean, I guess you could say that Clemson victory over Miami was better. But we have two ranked victories against Texas and Notre Dame, and they have. Two ranked victories against North Carolina State and Miami. So ultimately, this is like a legit... It's not like BYU went undefeated 12-0, beat a bunch of cupcake schools, and found our way into... We beat two of the top teams in the country, and still were able to punch our ticket. And that's all because of two people. Algier at, at running back, and Zach Wilson at quarterback. Because it's only year one, we're going to you know more so sit back in the front seat, watch this play out in the sim... And if things get a little funky, maybe in the fourth quarter, I say. We'll put that as a as a, as a potential scenario. Maybe I'll hop in because it's still Zach Wilson. He's the man that uh, featured heavily. Oh, that's, we got to upgrade some of these here as well. we got to get that recruiting on because recruiting is looking kind of stingy 
and very difficult here with BYU. But let's go into this national championship. Number one, Clemson undefeated. Number two, BYU undefeated. Can we get that national championship before Zach Wilson goes on to become a top three pick in the 2021 NFL Draft? So as we go into this game, I do remember, because it wasn't too long that I recorded, the Cincinnati rebuild. We went up against Clemson. We were talking about their offense. And at least in this scope, it's going to be Trevor Lawrence with Clemson. But their defense is very good. You have the number one defense in the country. And that could absolutely be like kind of the tiebreaker, the wild card in this match. Because BYU's defense is a solid defense, but it's not an elite defense. We have an elite offense, and we're going up against Clemson. That is an elite offense and elite defense. So... It's all going to be, I think, the tiebreaker is going... Because Clemson's obviously going to score points on our... You know, again, you look at our... What was our defense? Like 88, 89? Definitely not a slouch defense, but definitely not a great defense. They're going to score points. But can we consistently match and score points against Clemson's defense? That is going to be the tail of the tape for us. So far, looking pretty even. Oh, there we go! Zach Wilson and Gunnar Romney, 15 yards in the first quarter. And the BYU, I have no idea actually what they're called off the top of my head, even though I should know it. We're up 14 nothing. Yes! We are smoking them! Let's go! BYU, let's go! Oh my god, and they're taking way too long to score. Like, they are just, they are just, oh my god, we have a legit shot. Let's go possession to possession. We force them, we have to punt it early. Again, we're making them take some time. But I'm a little bit worried right now. Unless we can get a great drive. To the, they're most likely going to score on this drive. Oh, the defense stands tough. Okay, let's, let's finish this one off. I cannot not have BYU against Clemson in the upset and not at least get a little bit in this game. Let's see here. Short field position. Can I punch this one in and finish this one off and secure here? I mean, that's a little anticlimactic, sure. But I think everyone knew clicking this... For sure, everyone knew clicking this video that if we were going to win, fuck, we were going to win a national championship. Oh, the defense again, thank God. If we were going to win a national championship, it was most likely going to happen while Zach Wilson was on the team. So that's year one. And that bailed us out right there. I'm still going to go for it, though. Still? You silly? I'm still going to send it? Ah, uh, ah, uh, slits, don't care, got a touchdown, Jax Milne, let's fucking go! Three touchdowns, 270 yards, you see it. One of the best QB prospects of all time, Baby Baker Mayfield, and the BYU Cougars! They're the Cougars! I knew it would come to me, look at that player of the game. One of the most Cinderella Leicester cities of all of college football, he's the Jamie Vardy. Of Leicester City to the BYU Cougars. Zach Wilson. I, I appreciate all probably five people that will get that reference. But let's go, man. BYU year one, 28-16. They knock off the Clemson Tigers as the golden generation. One of the best offensive lines. We had elite production there from the running back. Even though he fumbled it late and could have cost our team. And I would have probably cut him in the offseason. And he got destroyed there because there wasn't a whole lot of highlights. But we finished... QB1 to wide receiver 1. Slants cheese. Put the stamp on this game. There's no, we got, come on, we got to see the hoisting of the crystal football trophy. Because this is huge for BYU. I, I think we just single-handedly one year took them from a 3-star to a 4-star prestige program. Which hopefully should help recruiting and help us over the... Why don't we get the picture there? They didn't show it to us. They didn't want to show it to us. Because they didn't want this to happen. But it still happened. The BYU Cougars. Our national champions, 270 yards, three touchdowns for Zach Wilson, insane. 55 yards, a touchdown for Algier, let was just ignore the fumbles, the two fumbles he actually had. Dax Milne, eight catches, over 100 yards, two tutties. Romney had a tutty. They relate to that guy that ran for president? Maybe. Tonga, unreal. Just at, just shaved off a round or two of his expected draft range. We're there with 11 tackles, five TFLs, and two sacks in the national championship game. As the BYU Cougars, in year one of the five-year rebuild, are national champions. So when you look at our players leaving, kind of the golden generation for BYU, at least, you know, Tonga's elite, Milne, Christensen, Zach Wilson is also leaving. 
uh, Herring, Warner, all these guys that might not be declaring. However, do have a couple underclassmen that think they're top shit. And I'm going to have to try to get them to come back. So we're going to get the kicker to come back. Wasn't too tough. Peely at linebacker. Again, we can, you know, anything that's third round or below, we're going in on it. So we're able to convince two of our key returning starters to come back, to run it back, and see what this new generation of BYU, can we yet again shock the world and win a second national championship? On signing day, I don't, you know, again, for me, if you, if you watch these rebuilds, I'm going quality over quantity, which doesn't bode well when you look at the big picture here. But hell, let's be honest. If BYU ever signed two four-star players, that'd be like an all-time recruiting class for them. So we did get 72 safety, 72 athletes, 64, 65, 70, 66, 63, 69, and a 72 overall a defensive tackle. Uh, but our four-stars, which we definitely appreciate, we got triplet as an athlete. And King as an athlete. So hopefully these guys can make a big splash for us. So we start year two. Number one ranked. Which is kind of weird. That's one thing I can't predict very well. Here in NCAA. Because sometimes we should be absolutely higher ranked than we were the year before. Obviously we're defending national champions. But a lot of times the, the preseason ranking takes into account the, the skill on your roster. We lost a lot of guys. Baylor Romney's taking over for Zach Wilson. He's a 90 over quarterback. I'm not worried about it. We still should have solid to strong quarterback play, but like I'm still shocked that uh, Algier, 96. We got Ketoa, 91. So we have a great one two punch at running back. Gunnar Romney. Wait a minute. These guys related. Bay, I'm assuming. I don't know. They could be related. That'd be cool. But Romney, 92. Pau, 88. Hill, 80. I mean, wide receiver room. I mean, at least we have a legit wide receiver one and two. Uh, luckily, injuries are off, so no worries there. Rex at 96 overall, as well as a preseason All-American as a true sophomore. Uh, Redshirt sophomore, sorry. That looks good. Offensive line, though, is kind of rough. Barrington, 92, is the best of the bunch. Empty, uh, 97 as well. But the rest of them in the 70s, yeah, it's going to be, you know, day and night. Then you look at the defense, the front line is not as good as it was the year before. Linebacking core is the strength of the team. Peely's a 92. Wilgar, 92. 88 for Chaz Ayu. So that is the strength of the team. Secondary, not particularly great. No lockdown players. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we got good special teams. We got a hell of a running back room. We got a good QB one, a good wide receiver one, and our linebacking core. I would take it against almost any linebacking core in the country. Does that mean good enough to run the gauntlet? Maybe. Let's see what we can do here in year two. But you want to see something that did change? Recruiting. Oh my god, recruiting was like pulling teeth. In the first year. No one wanted to come here. But you won the national championship. And things kind of fall into place. Look at this, man. Five stars and four stars. All want to buy what BYU is selling. Now, I don't know if a school like BYU could, like... Like, can you go there if you're not religious? Like, could you go there if you have no interest in Mormonism? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Uh, I don't I, I, I don't know. I feel like one of those schools, it's, it could be, like... There's no way it's Mormon only. Maybe it's like strongly encouraged. I don't know. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But in this world, BYU is now looking like a football powerhouse and kids are buying in. It was obvious with losing Zach Wilson, everyone. There was going to be that drop off. How drastic though. We started number one. We finished number eight, 10 and two, which is, well, it's, it's honestly not that bad of a drop off. 10 and two still have a hell of a year for BYU. And knowing that, you know, we're, 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 we're working through it. We're working through this transitionary period. Baylor Romney, the junior. So hopefully we can still get another year to him. 3,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, 4 picks. If he's only going to be better next season, we could have another Zach Wilson-like season. 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns for Algier. That's not bad. A little bit worse than it was a year ago. We relied a little more on RB2, but still a rushing attack is S-tier. Gunnar Romney, uh, 900 yards, 6 tutties, not bad. Defensively, uh, Eula, the team, 85 tackles, 16 TFLs. 5 and S sacks, Wilgar, 5 interceptions. Micah Harper, the sophomore, so that's good. Hopefully that gives him a kick in the ass to get some big development in the offseason. But unfortunately, as we sit number 8, we're not going to be able to defend our national championship. Uh, but still, be top 10 is good for BYU. We're ahead of Alabama. Look at some no undefeated school nine and three Tennessee is somehow number two. Feel like that's a little disrespectful, but ten and two, I'll take that for a year two. We'll get a nice bowl game, hopefully a nice bowl game victory, so that we can rebuild, revamp for year three to be more competitive for that natty. 
We got ourselves our ticket to the Sugar Bowl against number four, Iowa State. Uh, Oldroyd won the Lou Groza, best kicker. Cool. And we got ourselves a bowl game, a meaningful bowl game that will hopefully give us, if we, especially if we can win, a good starting spot next year in our preseason rankings. We took our lumps in this one. 42-20, Iowa State. A lot more ready to play. I mean, hey, they're a hell of a roster, though. Brock, Purdy, four touchdowns, no picks. So let Brees Hall, like, this is a full strength. These are Charlie Kohler, one of the best tight ends. In, yeah, that's a, that's a hell of an Iowa State team. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. For our players leaving, losing some, obviously, impactful seniors here. Gunnar Romney at wide receiver. He's bouncing, projected to go in the second round. Empty in the 97 center, projected to go fourth round. But we do have an opportunity to get some guys to come back. Old Roy, the kicker, get him to come back again. We have Barrington on offensive line, especially because he's going to be the anchor of this whole line. Need him to come back. Will Guy, middle linebacker, get him to come back. So luckily these guys can buy in because I think we are going to be very competitive next season even though we are losing wide receiver one and, and our, one of our great one-two punch at running back in our starting center. We're still going to be pretty goddamn good. I think only better. Definitely better than we were last season. So on signing day in year two, you can definitely see the trickle-down effect of winning the national championship in year one as we finish with the fourth overall recruiting class. One five-star, eight four-star, ten three-star which is very good haul here for BYU, which is, let's be honest, have kind of limited themselves just because of the nature of their school, potentially, um, as to how good of a recruit they But we got a 76 athlete, four-star, 76 strong safety, four-star. We got the five-star running back, Bill Bennett. We got a four-star wideout, four-star center. We got two four-star defensive ends. The number 12 uh, tight end, 76, Billy Green. Look at that, man, 76 overall corner. We got a good kicker depth. In case that guy ever declares. He's got a bunch of, you know, jobbers, guys that probably won't end up making the roster anyways. But the top end guys, the talent, this is an all-time recruiting class for BYU ahead of year three. Year three for BYU, we opened up number 11, which is kind of expected given the fact that we did lose the bowl game. So we didn't have a whole lot of momentum to start this entirety of the offseason, even though our recruiting class was very good. Looking at our roster, Baylor Romney, the senior, 98 overall, which I think... Was the exact same rating that Zach Wilson had the year he led us to glory. Uh, running back, Algier, 99 overall. Very good. 90 for Keanu Hill, who I always say, always say Keanu Reeves. Uh, we got Jackson, 88. Epps, 81. 99 for Isaac Rex. Yet again, back-to-back -back years as a first-team All-American entering the year. So the offense, from the skill position standpoint, very good. O-line, work in progress. Getting Barrington to come back to BYU was huge. You can see, though, the rest of the offensive line is okay, not great. D-line, 77, 79, and 79, which is average, but linebacker is still good. Peely, an impact playmaker, 98 overall. 96 for Wilger, who we convinced to return to school. He's an All-American. 94 for IU, so one of the best linebacking cores, if not the best linebacking core in all of college football. Secondary is coming along, 85, 84, and 82 for our starting quarterbacks. 80 free safety, 78 strong safety. Sophomore, true sophomore, Leon Newton, who is part of our first recruiting class. He's also a preseason All-American. Best kicker is back. Best punter in college football is back. So good luck stopping our special teams unit as we gear up for year three, starting at number 11. But absolutely, look at the schedule here. North Carolina, Florida, Iowa, Penn State, Boise, South Carolina. Like, we, you know, this is a very, very legitimate schedule. It's going to be tough to run the gauntlet, but if we do run the gauntlet, we're absolutely going to deserve our place in the final rankings. Recruiting class looks good as well. As you can see, everyone here on our short board is in the 70s. They're all four stars, and we're looking in prime position to get most, if not all, of those targets for yet another elite BYU recruiting class to hopefully go with a national championship. A bit more of the same here at the end of year three, nine and three. And um, let's see. I mean, we did have a very difficult schedule. Can I see, like, the full schedule here? Probably not. We lost to Arkansas. But, I mean, when we, we, you know, a lot of SEC schools, I'm not sure. Boise State, that's another team that I've been I've been kind of itching to get to in a rebuild there, 12-0. Um, I mean, but we're still ranked, for sure. Uh, looking at the records there. So, we started off with a loss against North Carolina, beat Florida in overtime, beat ranked Iowa, beat ranked Penn State, lost to Boise. 
That Arkansas loss, sloppy, to be completely honest. But then North Carolina, they were ranked. Boise State, those aren't bad losses by any means. And I'm proud of those first three. Or the, the first three victories of the year. Those are against very legitimate teams. And, and that's the whole part. As you can see, our prestige down up to a five-star. Working on that six. There's going to be those ups and downs. There's going to be slight setbacks. But you can definitely see that that first year of success was not a flash in the pan. Even though we haven't got back to the dance just yet. Still got two more years. Baylor Romney in his final season, 29 touchdowns, 12 picks, 3,200 yards. Kind of underwhelming stats for a 98 overall. Uh, Algier in his final year, 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Very good. Probably could have some all-time records when all is said and done. No truly dominant receiver, but some solid production. Uh, Ayu, yet once again, leading the team in tackles. Seven half sacks, 17 TFLs for my D tackle. 79 overall, outstanding numbers. Peely led the team with two interceptions. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get a bowl victory and, and start year four with a solidified top ten ranking so that if we do go undefeated, can run the gauntlet, could have an opportunity for that natty. We were actually able to win the Fiesta Bowl. Pretty cool. Uh, I think it was... That's just guessing. I don't even want to guess. Let's look at it. See the final score. Uh, we still got some recruiting, uh, you know, with those four guys that we still have a chance with. Uh, we're going to go heavy. Very heavy with our, our, our full-on... Max scouting budget because I think we land those guys. That could be the, the maker. That could be the difference between. Why can't I look at the the final game here? Did I send one spot too many? We saw that we won the Fiesta Bowl. I'm pretty sure it was like 31-28, kind of close. But at least you know, live and learn. I won't send this far next time. But it's a bowl victory. We finished tenth. Went up one spot. Hopefully that helps us in the preseason rankings for year four. No underclassmen that we have to worry about. Algiers going first round. Peely second round. Barrington second round. Sending a lot of dudes to the draft. Uh, 94 IU not getting projected to go. But, hey. It was, oh, neither is Romney. I mean, he didn't play very well, but still a 98 overall quarter. That's a little shocking to see. But either way, yeah, this is going to be probably the last of the big years in terms of players that we're going to be losing. But that is, I don't know, man. I that's tough. That's tough to overcome. But when you're BYU, when you're losing a bunch of guys that are well over 90 overall, you just, you hope that we recruited well enough to be able to be competitive year four and year five. So for our recruiting class, very good. Happy with where it turned out. 15th, we got one five-star, seven four-star recruits. So again, optics, just the overall 15th doesn't sound like you're going in the right direction. It's lower than what we were year before, but we're still BYU. And still be able to pull those kind of players is very impressive. We got four-star, number four outside linebacker, Mike Smith. I got a four-star, number two quarterback, Cedric Johnson. Uh, we got a 77 athlete, five-star, Marion Newton. We got a four-star, number two middle linebacker, Beam. We got one of the best guards. Another athlete there, number 32. He's well into the 70s. Happy with that recruiting class, baby. Year four for BYU, starting at number nine. So that definitely helped us. A little kick in the ass from that bowl game victory. They put us within the top 10. Very quickly look at our schedule. Not as difficult as last year, but still some tough schools. Missouri's no joke. We have Boise State, who beat us last year. They were the number one team in the country. Uh, Georgia, we have ranked Kentucky. Uh, Fresno State, who I think beat us last year as well. Pitt is not tough, but not easy. So it's kind of like a middle-of-the-park type opponent. So it's going to be difficult, but very much a legitimate shot. To run the gauntlet. At quarterback, we have Jacob Conover, 93 overall. Um, you know, yeah, he looks good. Good dual threat, some good speed to him. Massive drop off at running back. Here's our former five-star recruit, Bill Bennett. One of the first five stars we were able to land at BYU. He's going to have his opportunity here as a true sophomore. Wide receiver Keanu Hill is the best of the bunch with a 93 overall. Tight end Isaac Rex is the best pound-for-pound -pound player on this squad. 99 overall after being a dominant redshirt freshman with Zach Wilson. O-line is slowly starting to come together, but you can definitely see we have yet to get back to that point of that starting O-line that we had with BYU with Christensen and Herring and, and, and Lampy. All, all those really, really good 90-plus linemen. We have yet to return to that, but we're slowly getting there. D-line's looking solid. We got an All-American here in Vevlaki. Sure. Uh, linebacking core, solid, but not amazing. Secondary, looking pretty damn good, actually. This is probably the best secondary we've had so far. Micah Harper, Led the team interceptions last year. He's a 91. Christensen, 90. 83 for Billy Green. 85 for Shad Free Safety. 84 for Newton, who's also an All-American at Strong Safety. Raquel, the best damn punter in college football, doing nothing but coffin kicks and everything in between. So here with number 9, BYU, 
feel a little bit more comfortable because of the strength of the schedule that we could go undefeated here in year four and have an opportunity at that national championship again. Absolutely not! We lose to Georgia Southern week two! What a shit show! Okay, that nice year four absolute stinker. Seven and five, not ranked. We did get one uh, point here for our head coach tree, so I guess we'll do that. But that's, yeah, that's a little bit odd. A little anticlimactic, but still, we still got one more year to go, right? Still got one more season. Got a brand new quarterback. It is what it is, Conover. Lights maybe a little too bright. 22 touchdowns, 10 picks, 2,700 yards. Not great. Definitely expect better from a 97 overall quarterback, but he most likely will be coming back and hopefully a 99 to give us a chance in year five. Bill Bennett, former five-star, first year as a starter, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. Very happy with that. Uh, no dominant receiver. Not bad years, though, from Hill. Defensively, Bywater led the team, 74 tackles, 11 TFLs. We had five and a half sacks, 14 TFLs from Reggie Walker, 19 TFLs, four and a half sacks from Fevilaki. Sure, we'll go with that. Six picks, Billy Green. Four for Leon Newton. Happy with that type of production, but this is an absolute wash of a season here in year four. Heisman went to Sean Dollars. Remember him from the Oregon rebuild? He was sensational. Happy seeing that type of success. But, you know, for us here at BYU, able to go to the Red Box Bowl, win that little bit, you know, I guess, silver lining that we were able to win in overtime over Oregon State 41-34 to get some sort of postseason success, if you will. Uh, wasn't great play from our quarterback, but he did do the job on the ground with three rushing touchdowns. Bennett had a stellar performance, but it's all setting up for a year five, all or nothing, kind of, to get our second national championship. For our players leaving, uh, Isaac Rex, been a big part of our squad the last couple years, 99 overall. We're losing Rex out of the best punter, a top corner, and Micah Harper, top wide receiver, Keanu Hill, second best corner. Christensen, oh, this is going to be tough. Our most, One of our most productive edge rushers is also leaving. Whew. Good news, silver linings, at least because of that bowl game victory. We finished ranked, which should help our year five preseason ranking of at least having one. If we're continuing to try and gain some momentum after a down year, our recruiting class should also help us out a little bit as we finish with the number four recruiting class in the country, two five stars, eight Four stars highlighting that group, meeting the guys that we were able to land. We got David Jean here, the number four wide receiver in the country, five star. Able to get him to pick us over Boise. Jason Cole, the number two D tackle, five star. Get to pick him out of the SEC schools AM and Arkansas. We get a 77 center, um, 73 four star athlete. We got the 75 linebacker, 76 safety, 73 wide out, 74 corner, 74 D tackle, 72 D end, 81 punter. Need a brand new punter to take over Reco. Uh, 76 guard, 76 guard. So we went all in on the offensive line to give us the best chance of being competitive in the fifth and final season. So we enter the fifth and final year, ranked number 23. So that's a little bit of a grind, but you look at the schedule, the front end kind of light, even though we lost to Georgia State last year. Uh, we do have Notre Dame, Florida, and ranked Cal to close out the year, plus Vandy SEC competition. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is, uh, it, it's going to be a, a tough year, potentially at that end, but I like our squad. We have Conover, 99 overall at quarterback. That's even higher than what Zach Wilson was when we started here in year one. 88, Bill Bennett, impact playmaker at running back. 87, 86, 86 at wide receiver. 84 at tight end. O-line 80, 81, 81, 80, and 91. So probably the closest we've been able to get to the offensive line that we had in year one with BYU. Defensively, we've got 86 and 85, as well as an 85 and 83. So that might be the best D-line we've had so far. Lineback core, not too bad. Led by middle linebacker Josh Wilson, who's a 91 overall. 88, 82, and 82 in the secondary, as well as a 91 free safety, 90 strong safety, the safeties are on point. So there's definitely areas to this squad that are the best we've ever had in this rebuild. And pound for pound, you know, got a chance. Absolutely have a chance, especially if we can knock off those three teams late and stake our claim to be one of the top two teams ranked in the country. All right, moment of truth. I just straight up sim the whole year. Didn't see any results, wins and or losses. Year five, BYU looking for their second 
National Championship. I just want the opportunity. That's all I want. It's just an opportunity to be able to come in here, do what I do best. That's win national titles. And look at how everything look, looks good. 50 touchdowns, all these numbers. Uh, fifth. I love a good bowl game, I suppose. But never could quite replicate the success we had in year number one. Conover, 3,300 yards, 41 touchdowns, 5 picks. Insane. 1,108 for Bill Bennett. Get over 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. Brandon Sledge, 12 tutties for Ben Tuipilotu. Probably butchered that, but hey, there you go. Uh, he's fake. Doesn't exist. His morale shouldn't be shot. Josh Wilson led the team 70 tackles. We got 19 TFL, six and a half sacks. Chris Ward, seven picks. Marcus Shaw, six for Billy Green. Happy with those numbers. Just unfortunate that, uh, you know, season kind of came down like this. But we will give you a show. We will hop in, sim out that bowl game. Maybe hop in. Who knows? Let's see if we can end this no rebuild here on a high note. As we mentioned, our last bowl game loss against Iowa State here in the Sugar Bowl. So a little bit of revenge on the line as we hop into this one. Corso is taking us. Let's look at our schedule here. See which teams. Where did we hiccup at? We hiccup at Pitt. That game wasn't even particularly close. We lost to number five Notre Dame. Beat Florida. Beat ranked Cal. That's an ugly loss out of Pitt. Especially like knowing that one loss for BYU is probably enough to be a dagger for the season. I credit the guys for keeping their heads in it. Finishing one out strong and hopefully going out with a Sugar Bowl victory. All right, for the Sugar Bowl, we won the coin toss. Love setting my defense out there first. Kind of just a morale killer if they can't score in their opening drive. Kills a lot of their momentum. So first quarter, looking like defense is rolling tough here. But we were able to get the first touchdown of the game. Iowa State... Trying their best to start the second quarter off by tying that up. We do it seven apiece. It's looking like we're a little bit more of explosive of an offense. Conover is getting the job done. I mean, looking at the stats, best you know sim numbers we've seen so far from a quarterback. Does throw an interception though. But defense holds them to a field goal attempt, and we kick that set. Oh, look at that. What is this one? Third and goal. This feels like a perfect opportunity to come in, like Lendale White. Back in the day with the Tennessee Titans, you had Chris Johnson in fantasy football. You were scared shitless. Lendell White came on the field because he was about to vulture a touchdown. And that's what we just did for this sim. We came in. Bill Bennett, former five-star recruit. Probably the only five-star running back recruit BYU's ever had. He punches that one in. Should be enough to see this one out. Things could get interesting. 55-yard touchdown from Iowa State, but we are just too determined. Get a touchdown and interception pretty much... To close this game out, 31-14. We go in on top, man. We finish as a number four, top five ranked school. Sugar Bowl victory. Heisman contenders throughout this rebuild, but ultimately that year one with Zach Wilson getting the national. I mean, kind of sucks, I suppose, peaking in the first year of a rebuild, but still pretty special that that even happened. And we actually belong that year. We had a good level of, of competition, of quality of competition, and uh, successful yet again. Here for BYU ahead of what's going to be a very important day for all BYU fans around the world as we get to see where Zach Wilson goes in the 2021 draft. Hopefully, number two to the New York Jets. But that will do it for today's rebuild, fellas. Let me know in the comment section below what school you guys want to see next. And I'll get that video out to you guys as soon as possible. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4. Say peace.